John Steinbeck grew up surrounded by poverty in the middle of the Great Depression. The Great Depression was a time of economic crisis and unemployment, starting with the stock market crash known as Black Tuesday in 1929. This was a time when poverty was rampant, and there were even areas in the U.S. with 80% unemployment rates. Although Steinbeck was not poor while growing up as a child, he experienced the effects of poverty during the Great Depression as an adult. Steinbeck's creative writing professor from Stanford even joked around by saying he was lucky that everyone else is poor, otherwise it would be shameful for him to stay in America as a poor writer. Steinbeck also witnessed the effects of the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. Migrant workers ranging from Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri, but collectively known as Okies, continued to flow into California in order to find work due to the fact that the soil in the Great Plains became arid and unfarmable because of years of poor farming techniques. These workers were often poor and only brought what they could carry. The effects of the Great Depression directly affected these workers and worsened their situation because the economic hardships created an environment where jobs were scarce and money was tight. Migrant workers could be easily taken advantage of due to the fact that they had no other options if they wanted to eat. Many of these migrant workers moved into the Salinas Valley where Steinbeck grew up. Because of this agricultural environment, Steinbeck directly witnessed the poor conditions that migrant workers were forced to live and work in. John Steinbeck was born on February 27, 1902 in Salinas, California. Steinbeck grew up in a middle-class family and lived a pleasant early life. He was the third of four children and was the only boy out of the four. Both his parents had steady jobs and he grew up with lots of free time for his mind to wander and become creative. While at Salinas High School, he was a successful and popular student, serving as class president his senior year. In 1919, Steinbeck enrolled in Stanford University, but he shortly dropped out and moved to New York in 1925, where he worked as a laborer, newspaper reporter, and freelance writer. Steinbeck was an upcoming writer in the midst of the Great Depression, where he witnessed the failure of the American dream and felt discouraged striving to pursue his career during the difficult times. Just like most authors, Steinbeck endured financial hardships and failed attempts at success before achieving his great reputation and fame. In 1929, Steinbeck published his first novel, Cup of Gold, a story about the Caribbean pirate Henry Morgan. It earned him almost no recognition and no money. He then returned to California in order to experience the real life by working on ranches back in the Salinas Valley. In Salinas, he gained a strong sense of the farmland and migrant environment. He also married his first of three wives, Carol Henning, in 1930. Steinbeck's friend Edward Rickett advised him to make his work more realistic as well, marking a turning point in Steinbeck's career. Steinbeck ended up finding inspiration in the struggling poor, especially in the short story of Mice and Men and the play The Grapes of Wrath, both centered in the Salinas Valley. After receiving multiple awards, he passed in New York City on December 20th, 1968. In many ways, Steinbeck was a revolutionist. He channeled his experiences with the eugenics movement, or period where people believed selective breeding was a way of improving life, toward his urge to bring awareness to the, to the obscurity of the discrimination that took place during that time. Eugenicists were people who believed in the preservation of land. Steinbeck himself was a believer in the preservation of nature. He associated with ideas and beliefs of modern and natural li literature, which he portrayed in his writing. This is why he incorporated so many vivid images of nature, as well as interruption of nature, in his writing. Steinbeck's, Steinbeck's intentions when writing was to inspire and motivate. This made him stand apart from typical generic writers. He even describes his instincts as those of a minstrel, heartfelt, entertaining, and free. Some people have taken Steinbeck's literature as more than scripture, but also as a call for social awareness. In, in his novel, Okies, he talks accurately and concerningly about migrant workers. However, this does not purpose his writing for just awareness. It is also purposed for political work and how past leaders have dealt with certain conditions. In his attempt to bring political awareness to readers, he writes about the sacrifices made in efforts to uphold a competitive, capitalist economy. An economy where people can make money and keep that money at the expenses of others' suffering. In his later years, Steinbeck also began focusing his writing around his concern for moral and environmental ethics. He associated his writing with modern and natural ideas by channeling this social curiosity into the moral identity of his characters. However, 
Readers weren't so accepting of his blunt point of view, leading them to act out by burning his books. Steinbeck took this hatred and doubt toward him as a greater reason to reveal the truths of American society through his writing. John Steinbeck wrote much of his stories based off life experiences that he had. The main setting for most of his stories were rural Salinas, California. In his early years of writing, Steinbeck and his wife lived a tough life, never being in poverty, but only having enough to barely make it by. Many of Steinbeck's early work were not very successful or viewed well by his audience. It wasn't until his fifth book, Tortilla Flat, that he made a breakthrough. Steinbeck and his wife after that would always have money, but would still complain about it. Uh, after the publication of Tortilla Flat, Steinbeck's following stories were fairly successful, writing many big stories like Of Mice and Men and The Grapes of Wrath. However, in the 1950s, Steinbeck's work suffered when he became too sentimental. The work that he wrote, like Winner of Our Discontent, got him modest critical praises. He managed to work through it, and his next work, Travels with Charlie, was a pleasant story. Many of these writings would make it to high school required reading lists, while others would be banned from schools. Many of Steinbeck's writings have made top lists over the years and are still today top stories. In 1962, John Steinbeck won the Nobel Peace Prize for his writing. He was fairly humble when receiving this award, saying that he didn't believe that he deserved it. He would later say that the prize was just a minor rally flag in a major war. John Steinbeck left a huge impression on the world through his writing, and his writing will always remain as some of the best in the world. Thesis Statement Being surrounded in an environment of agriculture and migrant labor, Steinbeck focuses his writing on the hardships of individuals and their hope for a better future. The Chrysanthemums Quote, Kneeling there, her hand went out toward his legs in the greasy black trousers. Her hesitant fingers almost touched the cloth. Then her hand dropped to the ground. She crouched low like a fawning dog. Page 282. Analysis. The simile, she crouched like a fawning dog, displays Eliza's longing for freedom. It is almost as if she is begging for it. The description of her hesitant fingers almost touching the cloth of the traveling man symbolize her reaching out for independence. She is so close to reaching it, but her independence and freedom is figuratively just past the length of her fingers. Eliza faces the struggle of being confined by the limits of her gender, and she longs for the day where she can be free, just like the traveling man who visits her. She envies his fulfilled life as she feels that she has not reached her true potential. She is forced to understate it as a woman performing basic, repetitive farming duties. Steinbeck focuses on the farming life in Salinas and Eliza's gender limits as a hardship she must overcome, but also illustrates her hope as she is so close to the freedom she so desires. The Flood. Quote, Fella had a team of horses, had to use them to plow and cultivate, and mow. Wouldn't think to turn them to starve when they wasn't working? No. Till spring, no work? And if no work, no money, no food. Literary analysis. Steinbeck uses a migrant worker dialect in order to depict the uneducated difficulties of life as a, far as a migrant worker in the Salinas Valley in 1930s. The repetition of the phrase, no work, further stresses the conditions and hardships of the workers as they struggle to make a living and support their family in the midst of both the harsh weather and the Great Depression. The flood is essentially the epitome of life of a migrant worker in the 1930s. The hardship of no money, work, and food became a struggle that the migrant workers had to face. But there is still a sense of hope in the end of the story. Workers witness the first signs of, the sp of sprouts of grass, replacing the miserable weather conditions that once gave them so much trouble. Flight. Quote, Below him lay a deep canyon exactly like the last, waterless and desolate. There was no flat, no oak trees, not even heavy brush in the bottom of it. Analysis. The main character, Pepe, is escaping pursuers. The imagery of a wasteland-like scene is used to illustrate a situation where man is pitted against nature. His surroundings are waterless and desolate to show that despite being beaten up along the path and enduring the hot weather, nature offers him no relief, and there is no one else around to help him. The lack of water and vegetation symbolizes the idea of living in bare conditions without any form of comfort. 
A connection can be made back to migrant workers and how they were forced to endure the blistering cold of the winter times and the blazing heat of the summer, all on their own. They were left to fend for themselves when times were tough. There is also the repetition of no flat, no oak trees, not even heavy brush, which makes one think that the words no hope would fit perfectly into the quote. But the fact that it is not in the quote implies that Pepe still has hope of escape even if he seems trapped. By continuing his escape and pushing through the obstacles that nature puts in front of him, Pepe shows his hope for a better future is still not lost. Conclusion John Steinbeck wrote mainly during the Great Depression, so this had a major effect on the stories that he wrote. Many of his stories were based on the struggles that people faced and how these issues affected the characters. Stories like The Flood were focused on events that happened during the Great Depression era, such as the migration of migrant workers. These stories emphasize the struggles that people had to fight through and help better illustrate what these people did to get through these tough times. Most of Steinbeck's stories seem depressing because Steinbeck depicted the reality of the struggle between man versus nature, as well as the hardships that migrant workers faced while traveling and working in the labor camps throughout California. His work exposed the injustices that migrant workers faced and allowed us to become aware of the pitiful situations that human beings were being forced to work in. We enjoyed the realism and straightforwardness of his stories, and the symbolism was also powerful in conveying a deeper meaning. Flight seemed the most interesting because of its longer length, which allowed for more details and plot to be put into the story. The detailed imagery and descriptions of Pepe's journey